Good afternoon. Um, a very warm welcome to you all, and uh, it's good to see you here. Um, my name's Michael Stoop. You probably don't know me, but uh, I've been in the industry for, gosh, since 1976. Um, started my life at Winkworth down in, uh, in, in Knightsbridge. Um, became a franchisee of Winkworth in 1979. Um, and we built up a franchise group, which now, I think, in London sort of extends to about 100 offices. Um, I then went to work for Legal and General. Uh, and set up their franchise organisation uh, and we sold that business to the property franchise group which is probably better known to you as Martin and Co. Um, and I left there three years ago to um, get back on my own again and, and part of getting back on my own again was to uh, uh, meet Trahim um, who I think probably is known to most of you in the room um, and I've been working with Inner Dash for uh, 18 months and um, have seen uh, an incredible sort of growth of this wonderful app which um, uh, as I said I'm sure some of you already know about um, but it's been, a, it's been an interesting journey, and the journey I think has only just started. Um, we're moving and, and changing all the time and evolving, um, but more of that later. Um, before we get set proceedings underway, a um, bit of housekeeping. I know as a state agents you're very keen to keep looking at your uh, uh, iPhones or Android phones. Could you just put them onto silent, please? That would be very helpful. Um, and as I say, part of, part of today really is uh, Inner Dash sponsoring this event and Chris Watkin, who again should be known to most of you in the room, um, is going to talk to you about how you should get more landlords. Um, and I think coupled with that, uh, and I go back to the Inner Dash uh, app, to me technology has um, been an impressive uh, development over the last probably 10, 15 years. I, me I, mean, I remember in 1999, first having email. Um, which is quite a, quite a dramatic sort of change of events. And then we had websites, and then we got leads, and then we had Rightmove, and then we had Zupra, and then we had On The Market, and, and it's, sort of, it's grown exponentially um, ever since. So I, I never take away the fact that uh, us as agents, I still classify myself as an agent, that we need, still need to pick up the phone. I think the art of communication is sometimes dying, but certainly there's an appetite out there for um, the consumer to do as more and more as they can via apps or, or via websites, and, and hence I feel that this is where InnerDash has a part to play in, in the years to come. And, and I think people do want things now, uh, whether we're using Uber, whether we're using a BA app, whether we're using Trainline. Um, I personally love those journeys that you can just do it seamlessly. Um, I think what we're trying to develop here at, uh, at InnerDash is a seamless uh, app that helps you through the journey. Um, but as I say, today is probably more about uh, Chris, uh, uh, giving you some hints and clues as to how you can gain more landlords. Um, we have the full team of, of InnerDash here today, from the CEOs to the sales staff to the to the technical guys, to the, to the, to the marketing uh, uh, people as well. So um, afterwards, when Chris has finished up, we'll do a Q&A session and you can either ask me questions about um, where I've been and my experiences within the industry because I've seen several uh, recessions of which we've come in and gone out of and um, this is a very cyclical business, which we all know. Um, so if you want to direct any questions at me, please do. Um, and obviously Chris will be there to, to, to answer questions, but I'll field the questions. We've got two um, mics down here, so one of my gorgeous assistants will be uh, uh, able to help you to uh, hear your question. Um, so that's about it for me. I'll, I'll come back, as I said, at the end of, end of Chris's uh, um, session, but um, I hope you enjoy the, enjoy the session, and um, I'd like to introduce you to Chris Watkin. Uh, firstly, thank you very much uh, to Drahim, uh, Michael and everyone at the Ina Dash team for inviting me along today to share with you guys London Letting Agents how to attract London, letting agent, London landlords to your lettings agency. Uh, today is being filmed because I can absolutely guarantee you, you won't remember half the thing I do anyway. So hold on to your hats. Have your mobile phones ready because somewhere throughout um, this transition, this this presentation, um, for those of you that don't know, I'm, I'm going to be. If you text me your postcode, I will give you a list of every rental property, private rental property in your postcode. And that's my gift. That's one of two gifts I'm going to give you today. So have your mobile phone ready for that. Okay. Let's be honest, being a letting agent in 2019 is really, really tough. You've had your landlords being battered blue with regard to Section 24 and the tax. You've had the issues with regard to tenant fee ban. It's really hard being a letting agent. You see, you genuinely think that you are the best letting agent in your town. Madam, are you the best letting agent in your town? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. What makes you so different? 
customer service. Customer service. Have you ever wondered why landlords don't swap letting agents? Too much hassle. Too much hassle. Who do you bank with, madam? Barclays. Barclays. Do you love them? They're okay. They're okay. Okay. So if I offered you £100 to swap banks, would you swap banks? Why? Too much hassle. Too much hassle. Are all the banks the same? No. They're not the same. But So if I offered you £200, would you swap letting agents? Uh, sorry, swap <laughs> banks. Um. <laughs> no. Probably not. Who here would swap? Who here swapped their banks? Put your hand up if you swapped current accounts. How was it easy? Yeah, it was easy. It was easy. Anyone? Did you swap? Okay. Who here loves, and I mean loves, their bank? Put your hands up if you love your bank. So why haven't you swapped, sir? Because uh, I've been in my bank for 30 years. Okay. Uh, as you say, it's, easy. it's, it's the easier thing. Better the devil you know. Yeah, correct. And I always think if one day, if ever I needed finance, it's great to have a 30 year history with a bank. Indeed. Rather than having just well, all, that, all that online that any bank can look at with your credit history. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm, not, I'm not being naughty there, but you know, it's true. You see, I'm, my claim to fame, my real true claim to fame, is I actually used to work for the Halifax. And I used to work in the Halifax Bank. And my claim to fame is, is that I was on the TV advert with Howard. And you can actually Google me. And I went, was flown to New Zealand for three weeks just to be on it for one second with Howard. And I'm not joking you, I was the token fat bloke. And um, <laughs> it's true. And what happened was is um, w as a bank manager, these are the good old days when we were selling loans and PPI. I tell you what, the amount of bonuses we got for PPI was amazing. There's no wonder you lot got screwed. And <laughs> um, what was happening was is that whenever an, um, the Halifax put a, a, an advert on for, to, to, to ask for people for more bank accounts, no more people came through the door. So the only people that used to walk through our door and actually said, I want a bank account, they might as well have had a t-shirt that said, I've just walked out of NatWest and them swines have charged me 300 pounds in bank charges and you're the nearest bank that I've walked to, sod them. And it's the same with landlords. Landlords will only swap letting agents if, they're, if you, as the letting agent, do a really, really bad job or it's end of the world with their property. Better the devil you know, can't be bothered to move, you're all the same. Madam, are you the same as every letting agent in your town? No, <laughs> do you care more? Because if you, you know, of course you must care. If you're not here, you shouldn't be. You shouldn't be a letting agent if you can't look yourself in the mirror and say, "I care more." Because all a land, all a landlord wants is someone that basically will look after the property as if it was their own. Yes, because they employ us basically to take, you know, let's say a nice round 10%. They employ us to basically only keep 90% of the rent so they don't have to have any hassle or trouble. And, they're, and basically they don't want any trouble at all. They just want the rent to be collected. You, you, they get their money and the property returned in a pretty good state when, when, the, when the tenant hands up. So really, how do you quantify that you care more? Because if you genuinely care more, because again, you think to yourself, those agents down the road, that corporate or that independent that's still in the 1970s or even the 1870s, how the hell do they keep hold of their landlords? It's the same reason why you won't swap your bank. You can't be bothered, better the devil you know, they're all the same. But if you genuinely believe that land letting agents are different and you are different, you have to prove that. How? But it's like the chicken and the egg. You need the property in the first place to prove how good you are, but if you haven't got the property in the first place, how do you get the property? You see, if you look at all the reports that, that come out, and the, some of the best reports are by the Property Academy, and they do some amazing stat, uh, surveys of thousands of landlords and homeowners as well on the home moving site. And Peter Knight quite clearly says, all a landlord wants, the two big things what, why an agent, a landlord chooses an agent is someone who offers good customer service and someone who they instinctively trust. But you can't prove that without the property. So how do you do that? Well, some agents, uh, again, how, well, how do you do that? Because it's, well, I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you techniques which are both short-term and long-term, which I guarantee you will work. I'm not here to sell anything, I'm here to give. 
So shall we have a look and see what you can do to attract the landlords that you so richly deserve? Right. I spoke with John Paul. John Paul is part of the Castledean Group who won the Letting Agent of Year Award so many years in a row they actually Sunday Times gave it up and changed it to the EA Masters. That's allegedly. And he came up with three things that he thinks that you as a letting agent should do if you're going to beat the tenant fee ban and attract more landlords. Number one, systemize your business. Cut out costs. You'll be absolutely amazed how much money you waste in your business. Just because you employ floss and she doesn't do anything. Look at your staff. Look at how you generate your business. What I would strongly recommend you do is this. Why don't you get friendly with another letting agent, not necessarily in your town, but in the next town along, and then actually say, can I spend a day with you and just see how you run your business? Now, systemization also includes stuff like technology. And I have some very, very favorite prop tech. What, a huge one of mine is Fixflow. I'm not being paid to say that, but I think it's marvellous. The other uh, fix flow, uh, sorry, the other bit of um, prop tech I'm a big fan of, and again, I'm not being paid to say that, is, is pay prop. And of course, our sponsors today are InnerDash. I wouldn't be here. I've actually done some interview of the InnerDash guys, and I've interviewed them and grilled them about their app. And that, those interviews will be coming out in a few weeks, and you'll, you'll see my opinion on it, InnerDash. But do you think I would be really here if I didn't like it? Wait to see the videos. I'm sure some of you have seen some of my videos. The second one is increase your fees. I'm not here to talk about increasing fees, but I will strongly recommend that you contact Sally Lawson. Sally Lawson, part of the Agent Rainmaker Group, um, has uh, some of my clients have been on a one-day course with her because I actually uh, work for about 112 letting agents around the country, helping them grow their businesses. And an awful lot of my clients have been on her one-day fees course. She gives you a system on how to increase your fees. Basically, in a nutshell, and I'm paraphrasing here, you send a letter to your landlord saying, when, you, when I took you on five years ago, you had 100 pieces of legislation and I was charging you Let's just pick a nice round figure, 10%. Four years later, you now have 200 pieces of legislation. So you have a choice. Either to keep your 10% and you look after the rest of the legislation, or I charge you 12. And if you send the letters in the right way on the right day, you'll get 99.9% .9 of landlords just saying, I'll, sell it, I'll stay with them. And the tenant fee ban goes away. I'm not being paid to say that. But, but, but it's changed people's lives. I'm here to talk about the third one, which is attracting more landlords. So put your hands up if you want more landlords. Come on, you can do better than that, boys and girls. I will guarantee you today that the techniques I suggest will, if, will not get you any instant results, but after the first six months, every year on year, my clients get an upgrowth of 20%. I'm not here to try and sell you anything. I'm going to tell you the techniques that you can use and you can just copy them. <clears throat> so even if I, you know, just, just watch them, see what I've got to say. Oh, and by the way, you will get an increase in, if you, anyone here do resi sales? You will also unfortunately attract more residential sales properties to your business. And again, you will get at least 20% more, li more listings per year. But again, you will get, I must stress to you, you will get nothing between month zero and month six even potentially month nine. Which for some of you in this room are millennials and therefore you are very short, you want the shortcut and you want the, I need the landlords now. Unfortunately, there's no shortcuts in lettings. So you either carry on doing what you're going to, you can either carry on doing piecemeal stuff for the next 20 years, doing something new every six months, or you can put the foundations in, do the hard work and play the long game and you'll win. So let's move on and let's talk about what I'm gonna teach you today. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to teach you some direct methods. These direct methods are not what I normally do for my letting agent clients. However, I want to teach you how the best techniques I've come across on how to attract landlords. And I'm going to give you the direct tactics, which are more short-term stuff. So here we go. Finding the landlord's real address of a competitor's rental property. Some of you might know this already, but some of you might not. But here is how, you, um, how, how to find the real address of a landlord. Hands up here who goes and gets land registry certificates. Would it be fair to say that depending on where you are, a good 40, 50, 60% of the landlords actually, don't actually says it lives in the property itself? Does that ring a bell with you? And you think to yourself, sod it, I've wasted three quid there, haven't I? Mm. Well, here's a property 
which is in Cheltenham. It doesn't matter, this works everywhere. Okay, so this is a Cheltenham name registry certificate, as you can see on the screen here, and it belongs to someone called, where is it? Stanley Ellis Hughes. Now, what is the demographic of a landlord? Are they more likely to be over 40 or under 40? Over 40. Are they more likely to be lower class or middle class? Middle. middle class. Are they likely to be senior people, probably business owners? Yeah. Senior people and, and business owners. What do you tend to find with people that run their own business is that by law in the UK, you have to register your limited company and most people are, uh, who are landlords tend to be business owners. This does not work all the time, but the hit rate is around 40 to 50%. You see, on your land registry certificate, it says Stanley Ellis Hughes. Now, what you then do is there's shed loads of company house websites, but they don't actually tell you where the address is. This one does. It is called companydirectorcheck.com. And you cut and paste the full name into that website. There's hundreds, but this is one of only very few which will actually not hide the address. And if you put that in, hey presto, it tells you where they live. If you can't cut and paste that, well, you need shooting. A great website, which I would strongly recommend, it's not on the site here, is a website called 192.com. Does anyone use 192.com? It is a fantastic website. Here's a huge tip for you. What you tend to find is, is that if you've got a, a, a land registry certificate that says Mr. Paul Jones and Mrs. Sarah Smith, why don't you, on 192.com, you can say, well, where the hell are they? Well, you don't go looking for Mr. Paul Smith. You can actually use 192 to search for Paul Smith, who's married, who lives with Jane Smith. There's a facility to do that. And what you'll find is, instead of looking for hundreds of Paul Smiths, there's probably only one or two who are Paul Smith, who use, who's, lives with his, his intended other half. And then what you can do is this, again, so there, let's say you roll it down, to, and there's two people with Paul Smith and, say, Helen Smith. What you could do is this. There's a website, have you heard of it, called LinkedIn? Now, if someone's buying something in Cheltenham or buying something in Watford, they've probably bought it because they have a connection with Watford. The brilliant thing about LinkedIn is it tells you where they've been in the past. So if they bought it in 19, I don't know, 2008 in Watford, and the, the, Paul and S Helen Smith live in Aberystwyth, say, and one in Scotland, go and look at their land, uh, their, their, LinkedIn profile, uh, and it, it's like a CV, isn't it? And just spend, I know this is awful, spend a bit of time and effort, I'm sorry, I do apologise, you have to do a bit of work for these guys, but go back and have, see if they were in Watford in, in that time. And, I mean, to give you an idea, the, um, um, my wife, um, I'm just, I'm not trying to sell this, I'm just telling you, that my wife, if you ask her, let's say there's a competitor that you want the whole landlord's database, Let's just say there's a competitor in your town and you say, I want every single landlord of that letting agent. My wife will get you the whole stock list of her, that, let, that letting agent. And these are the techniques we use. I'm showing you these techniques. This is the first time I've ever on stage shown people how to do this. That's the value I want to give you today. Most of you won't do it because you're too lazy or you, you, you've, or you want to play Candy Crush. But if you really, re I'm not joking you, but if you really, really want the landlords and you want them quickly, this is the technique that you should use. How do you find the rental address of, of a property? Did you know that, that Rightmove hides the address of a property in a code on its page? So here is a rental property, a normal search, and the address of the property is Dorney Road, London. What you then do is you go to house prices. A little drop down menu appears and you click on sold house prices and you put in the full address. And then what happens is 
it gives you every property, every address on that street that has sold since 1995 and it puts a tiny little picture. Can you see that little tiny picture? It's that one there in the bottom right hand corner. But what, what you don't realise is this, Rightmove will put the photograph of the last time the property was marketed. It's on the market now. So it's the same photograph, it's like playing who's who, you know, Mr and Mrs, where you go, he's got a hat, he's got chairs. You just match the photos up. There's your property address. It takes time. You could potentially outsource this to the Philippines, I don't know. But, but bottom line is this, this is how you find the address. Now this works particularly well for houses. It does work not so well for apartments, especially when you have two numbers in the address. Apartment 26 for High Street. It doesn't work due to the algorithms on the Rightmove website. But it works wonderfully well for houses. And again, if you're using the land registry technique I've shown you before, again, the more likely to be company directors, which means you can find them. That is how you find the address. The next technique is John Paul's famous three questions. Now, if you were on his agency uh, growth strategies for, uh, Facebook group, which is one of the most famous on uh, Facebook, uh, someone went online a couple of days ago and actually said, um, I, John Paul has taught me everything on how I'm getting landlords and people and I'm just loving it. So I rang him up on the train on the way down and said, why I, JP, because he comes from up north, and said, what's your magic questions? And these are his questions that I'm giving to you today. These are hot off the press, where it says the word Hackney, you change it to the name of your town. And the bottom line is this, you will all have a database of landlords. Okay? And basically he says that no matter what other conversation and telephone call you're having, you must ask, or you must without question always ask these questions, even if they tell you to, off. Because if you answer these questions, you will win. Can I put you on the Hackney Landlord Database? What's the first thing you're wondering, sir? Hackney Landlord Database. Sorry, I was writing down. That's okay, so I'm, I'm a Hackney Landlord. Can I put you on the Hackney Landlord Database? What's that? You see, something really weird happens with humans is people want to be part of a club, a tribe. And if there was a queue outside JP Morgan, everyone would go, well, why am I not in that? I want to be in that club. And if you are a Hackney landlord, landlord club or a database, people, you know, you say, would you like to be part of the database? It, the implication is it's something official. Do you know of any other Hackney landlord who would benefit from our service? That's a killer question. Because you say, I've got no one, no, I'm fine, I've got all tenants in my property, I'm fine. That's fine. Do you know any other landlord? Because these landlords tend to group together like, you know, vipers in nests. Shall I show you, shall I, this is a great one for ones that you're trying to tout. Shall I show you my, my tenants, the ones that just registered with me, your property, or shall I show them someone else's? And then shut up when you answer that question. First person to speak is the loser. That does take some balls to say, but you London agents, you keep telling me the London agent uh, lettings business is different. It is different, it, it, but it isn't. It's just a lot more intense. If you want to be the, a letting agent and you have the audacity that you want to earn money being a letting agent, you have to put the hard work in and ask the difficult questions. Just because you're number letting agent number 53 in your town and there's 52 in your town does not give you the right to attract landlords to your letting agency. Harsh words, but fair. I'm now moving on to more long-term marketing techniques. Who here would like a list of every rental property? If you would like a list of every rental property, one postcode district, i.e. E14, SW12, per person, and within the week I will send you a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. Please text that number. I'm only going to keep that number on the stage for 30 seconds. <laughs> Twenty seconds. I'm just going to text you the Excel spreadsheet and you can do whatever you like with it. It's 
going well, isn't it? Ten seconds. Right, you've had enough of that. You know. Doing well, aren't we? I'm going to have to shut that off. I'm sorry. It's annoying me now. I'm going to be busy there, aren't I? Genuinely, that is a... I will text you the details of... I tell you what you could do. It would absolutely help me so much. Could you send me a second text message to say which council you're in? It really would help me tremendously. Save me looking. So first, time, first postcode, eight, let's say E15. Secondly, Hackney or whatever the, 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 the borough council is. Do you know? You have to get rid of it. It's annoying me now. There you go. <laughs> Who here spends money on marketing to try and attract landlords? What do you do to try and attract landlords? No, not you. Who here? Oh, no, actually, I'm going to slack you all off, actually. People are ignoring your adverts. Landlords wanted. Any landlord. Any landlord with a pulse, please, please use me. Who here has tried to attempt doing cheap fee deals to attract landlords? And be honest, because you all have. Come on, put your hands up. How much? What percentage? 8%. 8%. Who can do... This is the time to, to let go. Who can do lower than 8? Sir, what can you do? 5. 5. Can anyone go lower? 5. What are you doing? 500 pounds plus fat? Okay. Can anyone beat 500 pounds? Open rent again. Say again? Open rent. Open rent. Yeah, well, there you go. Give it away. Okay. I used to work for a letting agent who spent £13,000 in 13 weeks advertising in his newspaper, fully managed £36 a month. Okay, so on the front page of his local newspaper, it said, I will manage your property for £36 plus VAT a month. You would then open the page up to page two or three, and there was a nice little advert that sort of size. I'll manage your property for £36 plus VAT. And then on page five, I'll manage your property for £36 plus VAT. Page seven, page nine, page 11, page 13, all the way through to the estate agency page. It was a big newspaper, it was a Derby Telegraph. And there was a, in prime position, a half page newspaper that said, I will manage your property for £36 plus VAT a month, no catches, no subject to's, no su whatevers. How many landlords do you think he attracted? Just giving you an idea that, that, that in terms of land lettable properties in Derby, it's around 18,000 rental properties. I'm going to tell you, I can count them on one hand. Okay? You cannot, dis you, ca you know, it's a boring little market, it's a city, Derby, and, and everybody reads the Derby Telegraph, yet still only four landlords. How many of these existing landlords do you think complained? How many? A zero. Not one complaint. And they were paying 80, 90, 100 pounds a month. Not a thing. So we repeated the process in Loughborough. And there uh, we spent around £8,000 because the newspaper is cheaper and we got one complaint from a landlord who basically said, oh, it's just for new clients only and he was absolutely fine. And uh, I think we got two or three new properties off the back of it. You see, if something is too cheap to be true, it probably is. You see, if all you're doing is attracting landlords with your price, that is an ever-decreasing circle. And just think, you might actually win and be the cheapest open rent. So therefore, if you are going to, in the, absence of, in the absence of worth, people can only choose you on your price. Your job is to prove worth to them. How do you prove that you're the best letting agent in your town? Well, you, and if you recall what we said earlier on, your job is to, is, all a landlord wants is someone that they instinctively trust that offers good customer service, but you need the property to prove that. I'm going to show you today that you don't need to do that. Now, the techniques I've shown you up until just now were direct methods, and that does work, 
that's almost what we call hunting. You're hunting for landlords. The problem with hunting is if you stop doing it, it stops. Wouldn't it be so much better if it came to you? And that's why the, this name section is a technique called landlord farming. And landlord farming is a technique where landlords come to you, not you go to them. Wouldn't that be brilliant if people come to you as opposed to you go to them? And they beg you, please, please give me up, you know. That, would that feel good for you? Would you like that, sir? Amazing. Amazing. Well, I guarantee you it work. Yet most of you won't do it because you're lazy or you don't like change and you're too detail-orientated. But one of you in this room might change. I don't need to prove this works. I'm going to prove it works later in the presentation. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do landlord farming. And afterwards, I'm going to show you my YouTube channel, which has over 900 videos and fully detailed step-by-step -step guides on how to do landlord farming. You do not need to pay me one penny to do this to farming technique. The question is, are you going to start and are you going to continue on with it? Because I guarantee you, whilst you won't get any business for the first six months, after the first six to nine months, every year, 12 months thereafter, you will grow by 20% a year, absolute minimum, if you adopt the system. And I tell you exactly what to do on the system here and in the videos I'm going to show you. Now, let's have a look at how most agents use traditional marketing. They use two different types of marketing. One is called brand awareness and one is called competitive advantage. Let's look at brand awareness marketing and some of you will be guilty of this type of marketing. Brand awareness marketing is this. If we tell enough people about our agency, they'll use us. Reel off a name of a bank that's not yours. That's not mine. Yes. Santander. Santander. Give me some names. Shout out some bank names. Halifax. Halifax. Bonzo. Yeah. Shout out, come on. Let's not be sh Barclays. Okay. Would it be fair to any more banks? Okay. So hold on a second. We are aware of these banks. Brand awareness is not an issue. Yet you still don't swap. Just because someone knows you there, they know you're there. They just can't be bothered. You see, the only person that cares about your agency is you and your mum. It's true. Let me prove it to you. Do you care about that new solicitor's practice that's just opened up on the high street with their fifth branch? And they, they've been open since 1862 and they've got 30 partners. They've just won the Sunday Times Award and the Wrong Move Website uh, Award, the Esther's Award or whatever it's called in solicitors. Does anyone care? Do you care? So why should anyone care about your agency, sir? The only person that cares about your agency is you and your bum. You see, I believe that we're not in the property business, we're in the people business, and people buy from people. So just because you've got a brand and you've got a logo and it's in uh, whatever Pantone colour and a certain font, that isn't brand awareness. I want brand choice. I want people to say, you need to go and see that bloke, he's really good, or that lady. You need to prove that you are the number one agent in the town, the go-to person, that whenever the word property comes in, you're the person they talk about. You see, in this country, we are too reliant on pushing our brand. You, don't, you get Hart out, you get Connells out, you get Dexter's out. Whilst if you go abroad, we all put the Australians, Tom Panos and Josh Fegan, we put these Australians on a, on a pedestal. Um, in, in, in Australia, it's all about the person from the agency, not the person, not the agency. Nobody cares about your brand and what colour it is. So if you decide that you're going to spend £10,000 on a new logo refresh, you might as well put 20 quid notes in a shredder or give them to me and Matt and Chris and we'll go down the pub later. A fancy new brand is not going to attract new landlords to you. A bad one will hold you back. But in reality, it's not your colour of your brand. It's you. It's what you, pe it's what you offer. And if you do that and you get people attracted to you, people will come to you. And that's what you said you wanted. I'm sure you speak for the rest of everyone in this room. You want landlords to come and speak to you. It's how it works in Australia and it's how it will happen in the UK as we change. If we can change our mindset and, and, and come away from hiding behind our brands. The second type of marketing is competitive advantage marketing. Now, competitive advantage marketing is the sort of marketing where you produce an A5 flyer and it says, hi, I am, leave space for the name of letting agent, and I have X number of branches, I've been open since 2PC, I'm open 26 hours a day, I'm all qualified, I'm this, I'm this, and I'm so much better than every other letting agent in the town. 
If a solicitor said, I've got 30 branches, and I've got five, five networks, and I've just won this award and I've just won that award, would you care? Be honest, sir? No. So why should anyone care about you at, uh, winning the Sunday Times Award or the EA Masters? Or the fact you've got six branches or seven branches or you open 26 hours a day or you've been open since 2 BC. People only care about themselves. I don't, you know, it, it, that's a fact. I'm not saying that in a nasty way, but people only care about themselves. They care about themselves, their family, their friends, what, what turns them on and what flicks their switch. You see, if you want people to be attracted to you, you have to be attractive. So what you've got to work out is, what is attractive to a landlord? What is going to make a landlord talk to you, want to talk to you? And if you look at the word, if you look up the word attractive in the dictionary, words like interesting, educational, intriguing come up. You opening up since 2 BC and four branches ain't interesting. So what we've got to do is, I mean, this is the magic bit that you all forget, to the person reading it. You see, I advocate a technique called content marketing. Landlord farming is just content marketing for letting agents. So you can Google that word, content marketing. And content marketing is a technique of people being attracted to you by you producing content that they would miss if you stopped doing it. When was the last time you saw me post? No, let me turn it around. Who here genuinely knows how I earn my money? Yes, I know you do. You do. <laughs> Have you ever wondered? You know, I took all these videos out. You must have all seen me. I know plenty of you sit with comment to me. I've seen my videos. Have you ever wondered why I create those videos and put them out? Because I don't charge anyone, anyone to be videoed, and it costs me money and my time to produce them. Have you wondered why I ever do it, sir? Um, content information, to get things out that are interesting to people. I create content which is of interest to letting agents, so they become attracted to me, and then they ring me up and basically say, I don't know what the hell you do, but please can I give you money to help me grow my letting agency? I'm not joking you, okay? You never see me sell my product. But you said to me you would love landlords to come do the same. You need to do what I do, but not for letting agents, but for landlords. You need to be attractive and interesting and intriguing. So what you've got to work out is what is attractive to landlords? So what a lot of letting agents do is this. Right, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what's interesting to landlords. Section 8 versus Section 21. That's interesting. Top tips for your top tips for Section 21 notices. Three top tips on choosing a letting agent. Let's turn that one around. If I, did, if I was a solicitor, let's come back to our friends the solicitors, and the solicitors had an advert saying, have you, been have you been in a car accident? Should you use the law of tort or the law of negligence? Let's have a discussion. And there's the article. Interested, sir? If I've been in a car accident. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Why do you employ a, a solicitor if you've got a car in a car accident? In one line. Why? What are you employing a solicitor to do when you've been involved in a car accident? Negligence. Negligence to get what? Money. Money. You employ a solicitor to basically get what's due to you. A landlord employs a letting agent to basically collect the money and have no hassle. I don't care whether it's the law of tort or law of negligence, all I care about is get me my money. That's what landlords care about. No one cares about Section 8 or Section 21 notices, or how many grounds there are on Section 8. I tell you what, this I tell you what, a long list. Now you can use, I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but it is awfully boring. But I can guarantee you, there are certain things that I can guarantee you, every single landlord in your area absolutely wants to hear. Sir, do you, uh, who here owns their own property? Put your hand up, please. Tonight, there was a brand new for sale board on your street that wasn't there this morning. What are you going to do, sir? So tonight, you go home to your house and there's a brand new for sale board on your street that wasn't there this morning. A brand new for sale board. What are you doing before you get out of the car? I'm going to take a note of the address and yeah. write them before I know. No, you're not an estate agent. Oh. 
<laughs> See how much it's worth. Why? Why are you doing that? Would you, why, are you, why are you going on to write me before you get out the card to see what it's on the market for? To, to see what it's worth. Why? See what, see what mine's to see what mine's worth. Would you do the same if the brand new for sale board was half a mile down the road? No. But you do it on your street. So would it be for, my intuition tells me that landlords and homeowners are interested in the value of their own home. Yes? Aren't they? I bet you, all those of you who are buy to let landlords, I bet you a pound to a penny you've got right move alerts on the streets you own houses on. So if something comes on the market, you have a look. I bet you have a sneaky look every couple of weeks on right move just to see what stuff's selling for and what's coming on the market for. Because you've got to see what's coming on the market for. Oh, did you see that one across the road? It's gone for £500,000. Ours has gone up by ten grand. You all, you're all guilty of it. So my intuition tells me that landlords are interested in the value, and homeowners, because all a landlord is is a, is, a, is a homeowner that doesn't live in their house, are interested in the value of their own home. Does anyone disagree with me? No. So that's, I think that's the first thing they're interested in. But all you do is talk about, look at our Sunday Times Award. We're brilliant. We're open since eight days a week, 2 BC, section 8 versus section 21. The second thing that turns the landlord on is this. Who, who here is a buy to let landlord? Put your hands up. When was the last time you bought a house, sir? More than 10 years ago. 20, 20 years. Anyone buying at the moment? Did you just wake up on a Monday morning and decide to buy your next one? Or were you on right move every day for 6 to 12 months? Just like you guys with, with your cars. You know, you're going to change it in a year's time, but you're always on what car and which car and looking at checking it all out. Or a bit like my wife, who will spend a whole day in Nottingham and come back with one top. Why do we spend hours and hours and hours searching for on Rightmove? All these people, you know, you go on Rightmove and there's thousands of people watching every day. Who the hell are all these people on Rightmove every single day? Do you, did you enjoy the process of buying your next house, sir? No. Did you enjoy the thrill of the chase of searching for it? The wife does that. The wife does that. You see, my intuition tells me that when it comes to buying a property, the pain in the backside bit, whether it's a property or buying a new car, is actually the buy is the actual physical, here's the price, let's negotiate and let's buy it and go through the legal bit. But the fun part is in the choosing, isn't it? It's why my wife takes eight hours to go to Mottingham and buy a top, or I take six months to decide what car to buy, because it's fun. My intuition tells me that landlords every single day are going on to right move to see what's coming on the market to see where the next deal is, because it's fun. Anyone disagree with me? So therefore, what I'm suggesting is the two things that turn the landlords on is how much is my house worth and where's the next one I want to buy? So what I'm saying is humans attract, there's only three, you need to communicate that to landlords and there's only three ways that you can communicate to a landlord in the written word they can listen to you or they can see you. So let's have a look at some examples. Here is some landlord newsletters. Notice that they talk about what's happening in the, this is a Peterborough example, the Peterborough property market. You see, what you could do with these, is you could say, hold on a second, that's a bit wordy. You're dealing with 40 to 70 year old middle class males. You're not dealing, if you are a 25 year old millennial and you like pretty pictures and, and 100 words, you're not the demographic of a landlord. A, a landlord is a Times or Telegraph reading person who likes detail, they're senior people and they want information. So therefore it's not whether it's interesting to you, it's interesting to landlords. So therefore if you write articles about the Peterborough property market, and then why don't you send that to your landlord database every single month? You see, one of the things you should do is this. All of you will be sitting on a database of landlords that you've done business with or want to do business with, and you pick the phone up to them saying, can I do your business, can I have some business, can I have some business? No, you're trying to sell something and people don't like to be sold to. Why don't you give them something? Here's some more landlords. Tooting sees a 22.4% return on rental market investments. Mainhead, buy to let, demand and supply. You're going to say, how... How can I write those sort of articles? Get your pens and paper ready because in a minute I'm going to give you my email address 
and you can email me and I will send you 20 templates of articles that you can write on your property market for free and all you need to do is put in the subject line 20 stories and I will send you 20 templates that you can rotate every 20 weeks and it won't cost you a penny to do. They're about three or four hundred words long, the information comes from right move and Zoopla and you, the articles are something on the lines of should you buy a two bedroom or three bedroom in Waltham, Terry, in Waltham Forest? Or Twickenham? Or Kingston upon Thames? The buy to let market in the town today. If you do that, you're, in, you're talking about the property market and you all agreed a few minutes ago that landlords are interested in the property market. You see, after the weather, the British are obsessed with the property market so why, and we're the gatekeepers, so why don't we talk about it? Instead of we talk about Section 8, Section 21 or how big our market share is. Look at our market share, it's brilliant, no one cares. Some of you are in resi sales. So this is just for you, you letting agents can switch off for 30 seconds. This is, a, this is the best performing residential sales leaflet there is. What you do is this, you will have two or three versions of this. On the inside, on the left hand side, is an article about the town's property market. It's the same one you write for your lettings, it's just the same, it's talking about the property market. But on the front, you have properties that you've sold. So if, you, if you're specialising in big stuff, you put a big one on the front. If you're specialising in small stuff, you put a small one on the front. If you specialise in both, you have two versions, a big one and a little one. So you have the inside on the left is what is always the same, and then on the outside, you would have if you're or you spend, if you're targeting smaller properties, you put some sold stuff that's small. If you're selling stuff that's medium, you put some medium ones on, and if you're selling some big stuff, you put some big ones on. So basically, this comes through the door of properties that are on the market with with other agents, and they open it up and say, "Wow, this guy's selling houses like the stuff we're we're selling, and we can't sell, and also he knows what he's talking about." Huge tip for you. This is another tip for you. If you want to double or triple the number of people, this is the next tip for you, on your social media posts, take photographs of the name of your town. You will double or triple the number of people clicking on your... So you're talking road signs, you're talking tube signs, buses, uh, road signs, anything. Basically walk down your high street with your mobile phone. I'm not a huge fan of that Edgeware one, I'd have gone a bit closer, but I guarantee you people are searching through Facebook, and remember older people do tend to search a little bit slower, and there's a picture of a young girl, and there's a picture of some, a couple, and there's a picture of Edgeware, I live in Edgeware. Does work, double or triple the amount of people clicking on your, on your that is the biggest tip, I, one of the biggest tips I can give you today. Okay. The brilliant thing about Zoopla, here's your next tip, is that it actually gives you over 80 stats a day, that change every month, sorry, that you can tweet out. And if you uh, put this in with your um, road signs, so here we are, we've typed in E14, so we've gone to house prices, Zoopla, we typed in E14, it'll want you to finish the postcode off, don't. Just type in E14. You then come through to this and it brings in something called house price market activity and it tells you here, sales, there's been 604 property sales in E14 in the last 12 months. How do I know it's 12 months? Because it says so here. Property values have changed in the last year by 1.81%. The current average value of a property in E14 is 524,215. What you could then do, now this is important if you're checking stats out, don't just go stats, bleh. compare and contrast. That's the magic thing with compare it with. So, let's move on. Note, then in the next slide, all I've done is change 12 months to 10 years. Can you see that I'm with the arrows? And can you see? that the number of sales has changed to 13,807. So it would be fair to say, using my maths, that the average number of house sales in, in the last 10 years has been 1,380. So you could do a tweet with a road site, with a, take a photograph of the word Canary Wharf, and you could say, did you know in the last year, 604 properties are sold in E14 compared to the, to the 10 year average of 1,380. And these tweets get thousands and thousands of views and thousands, uh, not thousands, but loads of shares. You do this on Facebook as well. But instead it's Section 8 versus Section 21. Look at the size of our market share. 
This is the stuff that people are interested in. You can also compare, look, you can change it. Notice I've changed the word flat to flats. So interestingly, flats in E14 have gone down by 5.22% in the last 12 months compared to the overall average of 1.8%. And you just change the time. And you could also change the location. I've now changed it to E16, where values have gone down by 1.8%. And you could compare E14 to E16, or you could compare 12 months in E14 to 10 years in E14. And you could just regurgitate this stuff out, and people tweet it and share it and like it. And that's what you want, isn't it? If you haven't got engagement and people are interested in you, they're not going to get people attracted to you. Or you could do section 8 versus section 21, or even better. Look at our listings. If you would like those articles, please take this email address down and, I will, and with this subject line that says 20 articles, and I will send you 20 articles. Just send me an email. You're not set, please don't text me. Send me an email. Uh, I haven't got access to my emails at the moment, so it won't go beep, 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 so you don't have to worry about that. But this is, um, and I will get that to you in the next few days. That's my other gift to you today. I said to you that there were three, three ways that you could attract people to you. The written word, audio, and video. I've been doing videos now for two years and one month. Before that, I was just in the written word. And up till then, up for four years I did uh, with the written word. Well, it, I was no one. But through the power of video, I'm here today. And people are genuinely, you know, you go to a show and people stop you. And it's quite humbling. And I appreciate, and I, uh, the, I do it because the thanks you get from helping people is amazing. But wouldn't you like landlords to thank you and come to you, stop you in the street and say, I love what you do, um, I've recommended you to my friend. You see, in this world, give as receive. And if you give without expectation of return, it always comes back. That's why I do the videos I do. Because I, if I give it out without expectation of return, people will, come to, people will come to you. It's a human thing. It's a natural thing. So the most powerful way that you can attract people to you is through the power of video. So what are you going to talk about? You could talk about your listings. Boring. Go on to write me for that. You could do section 8 versus section 21. Or what you could do is this. Hi, it's Luke from Knightsbridge Estate Agents and Values from Queen's Road. And I've come today to West Avenue, lovely typical terraced house street within Clowndon Park. And I want to give you an update on what's been happening within the resale market within the Clowndon Park area. So within the last 12 months, there's been 83 property sales. And interestingly, the majority of those sales have been terraced homes, just like the ones around me today, with an average selling price of £227,900. Of those 83 properties, there's also been 18 flats, and the average sale price for those properties is around £177,200. And then finishing up, we have two detached homes that have sold an average price of around £252,300 and 13 semi-detached homes. Now when we compare Clannan Park to other areas within the local area, so for example if we compare it to Stonygate, we have an average selling price of around £286,000 but also around... Kind of okay, this is how you get that information. You go on to right move, you click on the word house prices, a drop down menu appears and it says sold house prices. As long as it's a searchable term on right move, and it has to be a searchable term, you click, you type in the searchable term, and you click on the word list view. And basically, all he has done is quoted that. He's written it out on a piece of paper and stuck it. He's got a mobile. Now, there's a tr I'll show you the training videos in a minute. But basically, it's a mobile phone on a £30 tripod with a £23 microphone called a Purple Panda. A £3 adapter that screws into the top of the tripod and puts the mobile phone in. Make sure you have the fluffy thing because you need the fluffy thing. And, he's, and, he, and basically, he, he did that video in 12 minutes. There is a training video on my YouTube channel, which I'm going to show you in a second, which tells you the step-by-step methods on doing that and what you then do is this you you do not 
the problem with social media is is that people people only read the stuff you connect if you you only read the stuff you're connected to the people you start again you only read you can only read the stuff that the people who you're connected up with chuck out so if you put it just on your own page the only people that will watch it are the people that like your page and the only people that like your page is your mum or what you could do is this. Facebook has these wonderful Facebook groups like Kingston um, Home at not, uh, Resident in Kingston upon Thames. Who's the only people that join King, who join Kingston, uh, Re Kingston upon Thames residents? Go on. Residents. residents of Kingston upon Thames, of which most of them will probably be homeowners and probably landlords as well. And what you then do is create a TV report, uh, basically a video, which goes through that. I'm going to show you how to do it. There's a tra free training video, 18 minutes long, shows you how to do it. Next, why don't you do this type of video? Hi, I'm James Hill, and today we're at number 22 on our... Hi, I'm James Hill, and today we're at number 22 on our countdown of the top 30 most saleable streets in our area. But where am I today? Let's find out. So here I am at number 22 on our list and I'm in Woodrush Crescent in Locks Heath. But what makes it number 22? Let's get straight into it and find out exactly why. Woodrush Crescent is made up of one, two and three bedroom houses and flats. The houses are a mixture of terraced and semi-detached and the average price paid for a property here in the last 12 months is £214,250. So what makes Woodrush Crescent so popular? Well it's a great location for first time buyers and its location makes it ideal for families as well due to its close proximity to Parkgate and Loxley schools 